Hello everyone, welcome back to Algebra 1 with Miss Betsy. Here we are already halfway through January of 2014 and time is just flying by. Today we're going to be continuing our discussions of how we find the solution to the intersection point of more than one linear equation. What we're using for this video is the second edition of Algebra 1 for Christian Schools, published by Bob Jones University Press. We are on page 290, section 7.5. It's entitled, Solving Simple Systems of Equations by the Addition Method. This is not tracking exactly with the third edition, but you can still get good uh, knowledge, good information watching this video, regardless of what edition of your book you're using. Also, it doesn't have to be a BJU Press book at all. You solve systems of equations using the addition method, the same, uh, same process, same procedure, regardless of what text you're using. So let's go ahead and pray and then see what I have for a lame joke and we'll get started. God, thank you for the blessing of a new year and for the uh, varied seasons that you give us with it being winter time when uh, sometimes we can enjoy the, the coldness of the air or perhaps we have some snow or or even some ice to enjoy. Father, help us to see you and everything around us. Help us to um, have the ability, give us the ability, Father, to understand the concepts that are before us today. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, lame joke for today is, what is a, well, it would help if I could read, what is a reptile's favorite movie? Well, his favorite movie is going to be called The Lizard of Oz. So, I actually went to the movie the other day with, with a couple of my kids, and we watched the, the new Disney animated film, Frozen, and they had a trailer there that there's going to be, um, or a preview, whatever you call it, a preview of Dorothy and the Return to Oz, so maybe there will be lizards in this one. Probably not. Anyway, let me read this to you. So far, you've learned to solve systems of linear equations by graphing and by substitution. Another method, called the addition method, avoids much of the work with fractions. For this method, add or subtract the two equations, or multiples of them, to eliminate one of the variables. Solve for the remaining variable. The second variable can be found by back substitution into one of the original equations. And you see why it's really of very little value to just sit and read a math text without taking the time to work through your problems um, and to figure out exactly what they're talking about. I wish we could just sit and read a math text and have it absorb into our minds like we do with with algebra, not with algebra, with history or with government or something like this, but we do have to actually manipulate our problems and that helps us to understand what's going on. But what we're doing, what we've been doing in chapter 7 is we're dealing with the ways that lines relate to one another. And for right now, we're just talking about pairs of lines. And there are two ways that are very obvious to us that two lines interact with one another. And a third way that may not be quite so obvious to us at first. First, the lines can be parallel. And an example of this would be a set of, right, of railroad tracks or the old telephone lines. You know, we're, we're losing a lot of lines now with so much, so much being digital. But you have two lines <coughs> that interact with one another and that they run right next to each other but they never touch. So if we're looking for the solution of a system of two equations, we're looking for a, a place where they intersect, with parallel lines, there's never going to be any solution because those two lines are never going to cross. So there's no intersection point here. So parallel lines are one obvious way that they interact. Another way that they interact with one another would be just in simple, in the simple intersection of two lines. And of course, you see this very, very commonly in the intersection of our roads. You know, uh, Highway 78 north intersects with Highway 380 east-west at an X. And there is one point here in the middle where those two roads cross. So the intersection of two lines is where two points, where two lines cross in that one little location point there. That's the solution of 
this system of equations on, on your Cartesian coordinate system, you're going to have an ordered pair here that enables you to specifically identify the one place that those two lines are in the same, same place at the same time. These two lines here are never in the same place at the same time because they're parallel. These two lines here that are intersecting are at the same place only one time. And then the third way that they intersect that you've learned by now, but it isn't quite so obvious to us perhaps, is that you have two lines and they are collinear. What it means when you have a collinear relation here is that the two lines lie right on top of each other so that they have an infinite number of places of intersection. Every place one line goes, the other line goes as well. So you have intersection touching every single place, so they have an infinite number of solutions. And we've learned in chapter 7.1 that one way that you can find the solution of a pair of equations, if you have very specifically easily manipulated equations, is to just graph them. And you graph one equation on, you know, the equation of one line on your, on your grid paper, the equation of the other line on your grid paper, and you literally read off the coordinates of the intersection point. And perhaps their point of intersection would be the ordered pair 2, 3. And that works fine, but it's cumbersome. You have to graph the equations, you have to set up your grids precisely, and it actually works only in a very, very limited number of occasions because you very rarely are going to have two lines ex intersect at a perfect place. And then you also learned that you could solve a system of equations by substituting. And that was where you said something like y is equal to 2x plus 3 and then x plus 7y is equal to 17. And I already gave this pair of equations to you set up where we had a value here for y. This says that y is equal to 2x plus 3. So you would substitute 2x plus 3, as you recall, into that value for y. Then you would go through all of the algebra necessary. Eventually you would come up with an ordered pair for x and y, and that would be your intersection. But what we're doing now is we're going to see that you can actually add two lines together. And adding two lines together is a much easier way to solve things. So, let me show you what we have on page 290 with example 1. It says solve the system x plus y is 4, x minus y is 10. x plus y is 4, x minus y is 10, and this is example 1 on page 290, I think. Yes, example 1 on page 290. And what we're going to do is something seems really a little bit strange. We're just going to add these two equations together. And I'm just going to put my little reminder here that we're adding. Well, how in the world can we do this? Well, if we have our balance beam, our balance scale right here, and we have a 20 pound box on one side, and we have a 15 pound box and a 5 pound box on the other side, you know that's balance, right? Because you have 20 pounds on the left and you have 20 pounds on the right. Well, what happens if we add 10 pounds more to each side of that balance? Well, what do we now have? We have our balance here that has 30 pounds on each side of it, 30 pound weight, so our scale here remains in balance. That's exactly what we're going to be doing here when we add together the equate two separate equations. How do you add x's? How do you add y's? How do you add variables together? You add the coefficients of like terms. 
And life terms are simply, and I sure can't seem to get that on today, just chewing up the marker. It's what happens when you buy cheap markers from the dollar store. You just add the coefficients. I have x's here that are like terms, and I have y's here that are like terms. And of course you know that you can add constants. So, what do I have? 1x plus 1x, 2x. Plus y, minus y, that's 1 minus 1. The y's go away, don't they? I have drops day this morning. 2x is equal to 4 plus 10, or 2x is equal to 14. Oh, this is really easy, isn't it? Now we're going to divide both sides of this equation by 2, and we see that we have x is equal to 4. Look at how nice and easy that is. Now what do we do? We have a value already here for x, so we can simply back substitute that into one of our original equations. Doesn't matter which one. Pick whichever one you like the math the most. So we could say, with our first equation, we could use equation 1. We could say that 7 plus y is equal to 4. You would subtract 7 from both sides of that equation. And you would have y is equal to negative 3. Okay? But what happens if we would substitute that into <clears throat> our second equation? What are we going to get? We're going to have x is 7 minus y is equal to 10. So we have a negative y is equal to 10 minus 7. Negative y is 3. y is a negative 3. And you see exactly what you would expect to see, that it doesn't matter which, really need to just get rid of those markers, doesn't matter which of the original equations here we substituted our value of 7 in, we got the same value for y, which is negative 3. So then, the solution to this equation, to this system of equations, the point at which they intersect, is not x equals 7, it's not y equals negative 3, but it is the ordered pair. Okay, they intersect at 7, negative 3. And you know exactly where that would be. Right here is our grid. I'm looking out my window and seeing my chickens running in the yard. And x is 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. y is negative 3, 1, 2, 3. Th that point right there, both lines, the graph of both of these equations, is going to run through a point that's approximately here. So this is a very, very nice way to be able to solve systems of equations. So let's go ahead and do example 2. Example 2 says, solve 3x plus 2y is 8, 3x plus 5y is 14. I think I'll copy this one. This is example 2 on page 291. We want to solve 3x plus 2y is equal to negative is not equal to negative, it's equal to 8. Already thinking ahead how I'm going to solve this. 3x plus 5y is equal to 14. We want to find the one point of intersection of these two lines, and we're not going to graph, and we're not just going to do direct substitution. We want to use this addition method. And you remember that subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. I can say that 
3, uh, 3 plus 3 is 0. Or I can say 3 minus, okay, misspoke there. Subtraction and addition are related. They're inverse operations. Subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. 3 minus 3 is 0. 3 plus the opposite 3 of 3 is also 0. And because of this interconnectedness between the operations of addition and subtraction, when we're solving systems of equations simultaneously like this, all that means is that we're finding the intersection point of two equations. When we solve systems of equations simultaneously, <coughs> if we were just going to add this, 3x plus 3x is 6x, 2y plus 5y is 7y, and that doesn't help us. We need one of our variables to go away. But we can subtract. What is 3 minus 3? Three? 3 minus 3 is 0. So 3x minus 3x is 0. Our x's go away. But I always write something over here to help me remember that I'm subtracting. 2 minus 5 is a negative 3. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Or 2 plus the opposite of 5 is a negative 5. Make sure that you're really, really comfortable adding and subtracting signed numbers. 2 minus 5, we have a negative 3y. You also have to subtract 8 minus 14. That gives you a negative 6. Divide both sides of this equation by a negative 3. And look at that. You have y already is equal to... 2. Now what do we do? We subtract, we substitute our y value here into one of our two equations. Which equation are we going to substitute it in? Whichever one you wish. So let's substitute in this first equation. 3x plus 2 times 2 is equal to 8. 3x plus 4 is equal to 8. 3x is 4. x is equal to 4 thirds. Do you think I really did my, my work correctly there? Now frankly, this morning I would doubt myself. Let me just go ahead and check it this other way. Using the second equation, 3x plus 5 times 2 is equal to 14. 3x plus 10 is 14. 3x is equal to 4. x is equal to 4 thirds. So yes, of course, I'd have substituted correctly because my solution here is the same. So what is my point of intersection? It's represented, if all you do is show me this, you have not given to me the answer. You've not indicated to me that you understand that the solution of two lines that are intersecting is an ordered pair. You have to write your solution as an ordered pair, which would be x is 4 thirds, 4 thirds, and y is 2. So this right here is your solution. And then your book is going to ask you to check this solution to verify that you found the right answer. So what I'm going to do is erase this work here. I'm going to erase everything except my original two equations that we're solving. How do we check? Same way you check anything else. You substitute your values back into your original equation. So first, we're going to substitute the x and y values here into our first equation. 3 times 4 thirds plus 2 times 2. Is that equal to 8? 3 times 4 thirds, our 3's cancel. 4 plus 4 is clearly equal to 8. So, our first ordered pair works. Our ordered pair works in our first equation, rather. Now, let's try our second equation. 
3 times 4 thirds plus 5 times 2, is that equal to 10? 3's cancel again. 4, ha ha ha. Is that equal to 10? My mind can't, hand and mind can't keep up. Five, 5 times 2 is 10, but that's not what this is here. You have to catch yourself. Make sure you copy your equation correctly. 4 plus 10, is that equal to 14? Yes, of course it is. So, not only have you solved this system of equations, but you have verified on your own that it's correct because the only way that an ordered pair will work as, as substitu <coughs> substitution for both equations is if it, act if it truly is the intersection. There's, this is the one unique solution to the intersection of these two lines. All right, on page 291, at the bottom, bottom half of your page here, there's a very good summary, uh, one by, you know, step by step by step, what you need to do to be able to solve these equations. Make sure you understand it completely and make sure that you are taking the time, not simply to glance over your math book, but to make sure that you understand the examples they're using and that you've pulled out and learned every piece of information in that in your chapter section. I have one more equation, system of equations, that I'm going to solve. This is on page 292, and it's example number three. <coughs> 4x minus 2y is 13. 4x minus 2y is 13. This is example 3, page 292. And our second equation is 8x plus 2y is equal to 23. This is another very nice one. We've said we can add two numbers together. We can subtract two numbers. Did I copy this correctly? What happens if we add? 4 plus 8 is 12x. Negative 2 plus 2. We're going to eliminate our, our y value, our y variable here, so it'll work very nicely for us. We're going to add these equations together. 4 plus 8 is 12x. Negative 2y plus 2y is 0, so we have 12x is equal to 36. That's interesting. I was going to say it was 12x is 39. x is not equal to 12. x is equal to 3 once we divide both sides of that equation by 3. Now we need to determine a value for y. We can use either one of these that we wish to. I'm going to choose to back substitute into my first equation here because the numbers involved are smaller. Doesn't matter. There's going to be a, an equation that you will prefer, you personally will prefer to use when you're back, back substituting. And that'll be determined as you get more practice at this. That's going to be determined by the way that your mind thinks, thinks most. Uh, most easily. So, I'm going to say 4 times 3 minus 2y is equal to 13. 12 minus 2y is 13. Negative 2y is equal to 1. And I'm going to verify and make sure I'm doing it correctly. And you see that I'm eliminating, I'm, I'm not showing some of my steps, but I'm still being very methodical <coughs> and the steps that I do show you. And this is, this is a good example still of, of the type of work that I would be expecting to see from you guys now where you're not having to show every single step because a lot of this you're doing in your head, but you're still not just going from here to an answer. Okay, show me some work. Y 
is equal then to a negative one half. I now have the values for my ordered pair and this is what my solution is. My solution is the ordered pair 3 minus 1 half. The second part of your problem, however, you should always check. Here it doesn't tell you to check, but you should always check. How do you check? You substitute this ordered pair back into both of the original, whatever those things are called, into both of the original equations. 4 times 3 minus 2 times a negative 1 half. Is that equal to 13? And this marker is so low. I know you just love to see me throw those across the room. Won't use that anymore. 4 times 3 is 12. What is negative 2 times a negative 1? That is a positive. Negative 2 times a negative 1 is positive 2 divided by 2 is plus 1. Negative 2 times a negative 1 half is equal to 1. And of course, 12 plus 1 is equal to 13. So we verify that this ordered pair, order pair is a solution of our first equation. What about our second equation? It's very different looking. Well, we're going to check that as well. And we will have 8 times 3 plus 2 times a negative 1 half. Is that equal to 23? And you can probably already see that it is. 3 times 8 is 24. Plus 2 times negative 1 half gives you a negative 1. 24 plus a negative 1 is, in fact, equal to 23. So our check here verifies or validates this solution right here. And that's how you solve systems of equations by by adding the two equations together. And what we're going to see in our next video that we do is that sometimes you're going to have to multiply an equation by a factor so that you're able to successfully add those two equations together so that a variable is eliminated. So work hard on these and I'll see you next time.